Rub up your engines! Today there's tons of guys out there claiming to be experts who don't have any idea what they're talking about. Now I've been doing this for 52 years, fixing cars, and I've been doing car talk stuff really for another 20 something years. Here's five big myths that I'm going to bust about cars. And the first is the myth that you can buy special oil or special oil additives and that's going to make your engine last longer, get better gas mileage, have more power. Well it's total nonsense. If such additives and oils did exist, they would be sold in the cars in the first place because the car manufacturers get bonus points for meeting EPA standards. If the car got better gas mileage, it's better for them. So don't think that any of these magic oils are going to do anything, except possibly damage your car. Look at the oil cap. This one says to use 10W30 oil. So that's what you use. And this one says use 5W30. So that's what you use. So stick to that. There's a million brands out there you can use. Don't think, oh, if I put this magic ceramic coating oil in, it's going to work better. Or I'm going to use a lighter oil or a heavier oil. No. The only thing that you got to worry about is keeping it clean. You want to change it regularly. Now let's say you buy an old junker and the engine is all dirty, you take off the valve cover, there's all kinds of sludge in there. Well then you can use something like this K&W motor flush, basically kerosene. You follow the directions, this is a five minute one. You put it in the oil, you let it idle for five minutes, then you drain it all out and change the oil filter. And the kerosene inside will get rid of a lot of the sludge inside. If you bought a car and it's all sludged up, yeah, you want to clean it out to get the crud out of it. And don't get the on bright idea that oh I'll use the flush all the time to keep my engine clean. No you don't want to flush all this stuff out. They can even cause problems in a car that's in otherwise really good shape. So just change your oil and filter and use the correct oil. Don't listen to any of these scams out there that are telling you you're going to get better gas mileage, more horsepower. All that stuff is a line of baloney. Now the second myth I'm going to bust is tire pressure. Some guys will tell you oh you can adjust your tire pressure to make the tires work better. Uh, don't mess with the normal pressure. For normal driving down the road you want the tires to ride the best and last the longest. It's always a compromise because you want them to ride well but you want them to last long. When I was young an old trick guys would do would be they'd have a big car and they'd lower the air pressure 5 or 10 psi. The tire was softer and it actually had a softer ride. The tires wore out faster, the middle was in more and the outer edges would wear more and it didn't handle as well. It wasn't made for these sloppy tires. You get more flat tires because less pressure, the tires a lot softer and nails can go through easier. Now in specialty situations you could let air out of your tire. Really slippery road. If you let a bunch of tire pressure out the tire is going to get flatter and have more area contacting the ground which means it has more friction and it might not slip. So if you were stuck you could let some of the air out and then if you drove out of the hole Hopefully you got an air pump in your trunk, I got an electric one, you could fill it back up and drive merrily down the road. Hey the military Humvees are set for that. They could let a bunch of air pressure out so they could get out and then they'd push a button and they'd reinflate. So I mean in a specialty situation go ahead and let some air out but don't drive like that. And the same goes for too much air pressure. Too much air pressure the middle of the tire will wear. Plus it's dangerous if you overinflate them they can eventually explode. Realize that you do your tires when it's cold outside, car hasn't run all day, check the pressure. As you drive down the road the pressure goes up. Just check your pressures at 32. Take it for a half hour drive and quick jump out and check it. You're going to see the pressure is quite a bit higher because as it heats up it's physics. The pressure increases and then when it cools down it goes back to the 32. So if you want the combination of the best handling, the best gas mileage, the longest life of your tire and the least amount of possibility of getting nails and stuff going through the tires, put in the regular pressure for your car. You want to get a gauge that's your own so it's always the same. These gauges, hey, they vary from place to place. So don't listen to any fool who tells you, oh, you can put in less pressure, you can put in more pressure. No, you want just the right pressure, the tires will be happy, and you'll be happy with the ride and the handling. Now, the next myth has to do with automatic transmission fluid. Some guys say all automatic transmission fluid is the same, you can use any of them, whoever makes them. In modern cars, I will advise you. Don't listen to that advice at all. There are so many different types of automatic transmissions these days and generally each one has a specific fluid 
that's designed for that transmission. Last week, one of my fans emailed me, said, Scotty, I was a fool, I didn't listen to you. And he had a CVT transmission in a Nissan. He changed the fluid, he didn't buy the Nissan fluid. He bought one from a very reputable company that's been around for over a hundred years. And he put it in and now he said almost right away it started acting different. It started slipping, having a little shuddering that it didn't have in the first place. This doesn't have any ingredients. It's all their trade secrets. So who knows what additives and what components are in one versus another. Take a Toyota. Now Toyota sells Toyota automatic transmission fluid. But of course they don't make it. They're not an oil company. They know what specifications they wanted and they're made with those specifications. You have no idea what the specifications are of other ones. So my advice, don't chance using generic ones. Use the same exact fluid that came with yours. When you empty out a transmission only a small portion comes out. So you're mixing the new stuff with the old stuff and who knows if those additives are even compatible. Stick to what they came with. They don't cost all that much more. For example, my Toyotas, I go to a discount store and I can get cheaper fluid for like four dollars a quart. Well, the Toyota dealer, it's like 580 for a quart of air fluid. So really stick to the same stuff. Now you can buy it wherever you want, as long as it's the same stuff. There's a lot of people buy at a cheaper price, it's exactly the same, but you want to get the same stuff. Because of the antifreeze, that's different. This stuff is made by Xerox and it's for Toyota, Lexus, and Scion. I use it all the time in them. It's the same ingredients because it's a hot coolant, hybrid organic acid coolant. It's not like a modern automatic transmission. This isn't shifting gears and going through crevices and computer modules, opening and closing valves. It just flows through the cooling system to cool stuff. It's a lot simpler than an automatic transmission and the fluid that makes it work. Because realize an automatic transmission, it's the fluid that's actually driving the car, the fluid friction that goes through, that provides the drive. You don't want to mess with how that fluid works by using something that's made by somebody else that may have different characteristics. Stick to the factory when it comes to transmission fluid these days. Because look at this STP one. Read the fine print. What does it say? For use with certain Ford vehicles. Doesn't even tell you which certain ones. Stick to the stuff that it came with. Believe me. Now the next myth I'm going to bust is Oh, you can use the high octane gas to make your car run better. In the three cars in my driveway here, the old Celica, the Matrix, and the Lexus behind it, I've used nothing but regular gasoline ever, and they all run perfectly fine. The engines are designed for regular octane level of gasoline. High octane gas, for many people, it's a thing of the past. The young mechanic, cars had really high compression engines, they would clatter and pre ignite with low octane gas. You had to put high octane gas in them. But modern engines aren't that way. They're all computer run. 13 years old. Even a 13 year old one's got all the computer stuff in it. It can compensate for any kind of gasoline you put in it. If you go high end in modern cars, let's say you got a Ford Mustang with that EcoBoost four cylinder engine that puts out 300 something horsepower. Yes, if you put high octane gas, you get 300 something horsepower. But if you put low octane gas, you get 200 something horsepower. It runs perfectly fine. You just have a little bit less power. It won't hurt anything, but you know, that's up to you. With all the modern computer controlled devices on your engine and transmission, higher octane gas is not needed. And what really I get a kick out of this, okay, there's regular, there's medium, high octane gasoline. I didn't even comprehend what's the point of the medium stuff is. <laughs> now I know some guys are gonna say, hey, Scott, he doesn't know what he's talking about. I had a car when I put high octane gas, it runs better. Well, yes. If you have an old worn out engine and it's full of carbon and has all kinds of problems inside, if you put high test gas, it might not ping because with all that carbon build up, that up the compression ratio inside the engine, the carbon takes up space so that makes the compression go higher because there's less room for the gas and air to mix so it's going to be scrunched more. In a normally running car, you don't need to do that. And if your car does run better with high test gas, then you need a carbon cleaned or it needs some kind of work because it's got an internal problem. If it does run a lot better on high test gas than it does on low test gas. Now you might wonder, all the advertising you see from gasoline companies it's for their high octane gas. Most cars really don't need it, but that's their highest profit margin. So of course, that's what they're gonna advertise. So what 99% of the people out there, don't worry about it. Don't waste your money on high test gasoline. Now the fifth and last myth that I'm gonna dispel is any of these gimmicks to tell ya, if you use this on your car, you're gonna get better gas mods, have more power. Eh, they're all 
nonsense from guys that are selling giant magnets that you put over the fuel line to make the fuel work better to line it up well i hate to tell you gasoline is not magnetic so it doesn't have any effect on it at all that myth actually came from a somewhat true practice ages ago farmers and their tractors they had rusty gas tanks and if they put a magnet near the line it could hold the rust pieces against the magnet so it wouldn't clog up a carburetor but unless you're driving an old tractor that's falling apart don't fall for these magnetic fuel enhancing things and don't fall for these oh if you add this to your gasoline it'll burn more efficiently i mean you can destroy a car that way there are guys that would put mothballs in they said oh well you know whatever's in the mothballs is going to make your vehicle run better it can destroy your vehicle don't try any of that foolish stuff same thing goes with those hho generators that take water and they create hydrogen that you're going to burn in your car and then you're going to get better gas mileage and more power that's what you nonsense too you have to create the hydrogen from water through electrolysis well you're using electricity that your car has to generate the energy it takes to generate the electricity and do the electrolysis more than you ever get by burning the hydrogen so in the end it's a net loss procedure you're not going to get better gas mods you got to get the energy to make the hydrogen in the first place ever since i was a kid people were trying to find these perpetual motion machines that would run by themselves but you know it's not going to happen on planet earth we have friction there are laws of physics that you have to follow you can't get something for nothing and these hho generators they kind of promise that but they fall flat now i'm not saying hydrogen doesn't work in a car cars can run on hydrogen quite well it's a very good fuel supply but you got to get the hydrogen from somewhere and you have to have a system that can meter it correctly to the engine and hydrogen's a pretty flammable gas it's not that easy to store so it's got its own problems so don't think one of these hho generators stuck on your hood is going to make your car get better gas mileage and have more power so now you know five car myths to stay away from in the real world hey maybe have them in your dreams but don't apply them to your actual car in the real world so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.